What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Unreal Tutorials, we are going to be going over how to add and install plugins to your projects. Now, in some of my tutorial series, I have used some plugins that I got off the marketplace, such as for sound effects and visual effects. So, when you are in your Epic Games launcher, you have a few options, and you're going to want to go to Unreal Engine. But you can go up to the Marketplace tab to look at different plugins that exist on the marketplace. Now, once you are in here, you can go get some plugins. So if I go to say Epic Games content, I can come in here and get this Pose Driver Connect plugin. But we can go to the cart. You can see it here and we'll go ahead and check out. After doing that, I will own that plugin. Of course, if you are looking for something specific, you can choose your tags and actually find it. But regardless, once you find your plugin that you want to use, you can go to your library. And in your library, you have all your engine versions that you have installed, as well as your projects that you have here. And below that, you have the vault. The vault has all of your plugins, so you can go down to the plugin you want to install and either add it to a project or install it to a specific engine version. And let's say we want to add, it really doesn't matter what we pick, but low poly cats. That looks like a good one. So it's not compatible with Unreal Engine 5.1, but Unreal Engine 5 and below looks pretty compatible with. So we can go ahead and hit add to project. Then we can select the project that we want. So it said 5.0 is supported. So I can probably put it in a 5.0, but I know these other 4.0s work as well. Doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and pick one. Let's pick the FPS tutorial. Why not? And then let's add it to the project. Now, once we do this, it's going to actually go through this process and add it to the project. Once it does, you're good to go. You can hit add to project again and select a different project, but you'll see that it has this little drop down now. You can remove local content to remove it from any projects that it's already been added to. But anyway, once you have done this, you can go up to your project now, and we added it to the FPS tutorial. So I can go ahead and launch the FPS tutorial. I typically do this through code, and if you do, you should probably keep doing that. That way, everything compiles properly. But you can also launch through here if you'd prefer. I am going to launch through the code. And so I've got my Visual Studio right here. I'm going to launch the project, and I'll catch up with you once it is open. The editor is now open, and I should be able to find my plugin. So when you come in here, you should have a folder for it immediately. I have Infinity Blade Effects already. The one we added was Low Poly Cat. So if I go into Low Poly Cat, you can see I have all the folders, all the things with that plugin. And so now I can go ahead and add a cat mesh to the scene. And there we go. If we play the game, you'll see there's the cat mesh in the game. And so we've successfully added this content to our project. Now, if we go into the project folder for my FPS tutorial, let's go to the U project and edit it with something like Notepad or Notepad++. When you're in here, you won't see anything different. And that's because this isn't really a plugin. This is just an add on. We added content to our project. We added cats to our project. Now, if we were to go back to the Epic Games launcher and do this one more time, but for something that's going to change the way the logic in the engine works or add functionality, such as if we do DB JSON, for example, we can install to engine. See how it's installed to engine, not add to project. This is a true plugin. So we can go ahead and install to engine and we have to pick the engine that we want to install it on. And my Unreal FPS tutorial project is on 5.0. So if I close this and in the marketplace, go ahead and change this to 5.0, I can install the dbjson plugin. So install and it's going to do the same thing that it did when we were adding content to the project. Now that it is done, it has been installed to 5.0. So if I am to open up the same project, I'll launch it again. 
the editor is back open again and I had that DB JSON installed. So if we go up to edit and plugins, we can now find our DB JSON in here. You can just scroll down and find it, but since there are a lot, DB JSON, and you can see it is right here. Additionally, you can find all the ones that you've installed that are not built in under the installed section right here, and you'd be good to go. But here's DB JSON, so I can then toggle it and then hit restart now. The engine will relaunch, and once it relaunches, the plugin should be activated. So when we come in here, if I look for DB JSON again, you can see it's already checked this time. And now if I go to the uProject file and edit it with something like Notepad or Notepad++ again, you'll see that the plugin section has been filled out. So you can see that this has been enabled in this project. If you want to disable it, it's just as easy. You just go back to it and uncheck it and no issues will come up as long as you're not using it for anything at the current time. Then we can restart now. And you can see that it's already going to modify this file because it's going to remove that section from the plugin. So I can hit yes. Basically, it's set enabled to false, which means that this plugin is no longer in use. So now when we come into this project one more time, you can see that the plugin is not in use and thus it can be disabled. At this point, you can also additionally take out the plugin section or the specific plugin if you don't need it. Just like this. And if you do that, if you clean it up so that it's not looking for the plugins module, this will still build and work fine. I can close and relaunch one more time and you'll notice that everything is working as intended. So let's close this. Let's launch it again. And it should run without any issues. Here we go. So the engine's back open. And as you can see, I can actually launch it and everything works as expected. So we have actual content that we can add to our projects. We have plugins that we can add to our projects, and then we can enable and disable those plugins. There is one more thing we want to show, and that is being able to create a project from one of these items in the vault. So earlier we saw some of these have a create project, and this is essentially what our templates are going to be. They are vault items that you can use to create a project with pre-existing content. So you hit create project on the one that you want, and then the main thing is you have to choose the path. In this specific case, it has quotes in the front, which it doesn't like, so we will fix that in a second. But I'm going to choose the path I want to put this project that I'm creating at. I'm going to put it with my other projects that I have. And I'm going to just actually select this folder. And then at this point, I do need to fix up my error, which again is about these quotes. It doesn't like that there's quotes at the start of the path, so I'm going to delete these, and I'll keep the default name otherwise. And there we go. We can create the project. Now the project is going to be created with the same type of progress bar that we saw for the other plugins and add-ons. And once it finishes here, we will be able to open the project up and use it just like any other project. So you can see it finished. Now let's go up to the top. We should see it in the list now. It is this Arch Viz Explorer. You can see everything looks right. Looks like the settings that I set up. We're going to open it up. And then it is going to do all its basic stuff like compile shaders and we are good to go. So that is the creating a project through a template on the Epic Marketplace using the Epic Store. And these are really just the basics of using plugins and content in your game that come from the Epic Marketplace. But if it helped you, please subscribe and consider joining the Patreon or YouTube membership to support me further. And thank you to all who have already done this. I really appreciate all your kindness and support. If you need any help installing any plugins or adding content to your project, just let me know. I'd be happy to assist you. Anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.